Hey everybody, Ben here from DMC Films and Cinderblock Studios. Uh, this is the digital commentary of a concept piece that I did uh, probably it'll be a week or a couple weeks ago for you guys. And this particular piece is, as well as a lot of other pieces I started doing last year, is a concept basic uh, piece for a acrylic painting down the road. And so there's not going to be, you know, a whole lot of detail. It's just going to be about blocking out forms, shapes, and colors. Uh, a couple things I just want to say before I, uh, we get started is that the uh, piece I, I did, uh, and as well as any work in Photoshop I do, I used a uh, a tablet for. This is a uh, a Wacom, Wacom, or Wacom, depending on how you want to pronounce it. I've heard it every single way, and I don't know. Uh, what the official pronunciation is, but uh, it's, it's an older style tablet, but still works all the same, pressure sensitive, that kind of thing. I also run Adobe uh, Adobe Photoshop Elements uh, 10, uh, and the brushes I'm using are both are all the basic brushes, uh, basic hardened and, and soft brushes. Uh, the the real paint brushes that I created myself, uh, mainly for the uh, the pine trees, which you'll see later. But as well as a couple uh, smudge set brushes, which uh, mostly in the sky and the rocks. And uh, credit to that person is uh, who, who created those brushes. They're down in the description box. So let's get started. I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do with the color of the piece. I wanted to do something sort of red, uh, sort of maybe a red orange. And I, I kind of started dropping out the sun, but I, I ended up uh, getting rid of it later, and so I just decided to take that one color and use that as sort of the, the main base, and just kind of let it get a little bit uh, lighter towards the horizon, and I add a, sort of this uh, purplish tone, and kind of keeping it toned down, but using that underlying white as my as my basis. So here's that special blender brush, and it's sort of creating a, a crisscross uh, stroke just sort of pulling it down and add a little more sky to the side that I found I needed. And that's pretty much it. I see I blur, just blurred the sun right out and toss a little more white down in towards the horizon. And this piece, I got the idea for this piece while I was at work overnight. And uh, it, it was this, this idea of, it culminated through uh, watching a lot of uh, episodes of uh, FCD Design School as well as uh, playing, uh, go back and going back and playing some Metroid Prime, uh, which I've been working on in my, uh, an additional playthrough, if you will. I don't know how many times I've played it, to be honest, but uh, one of the things that I was working on it was uh, talking about the, uh, these, this alien race called the Chazo, if, you, if you're unfamiliar with the games. and. Uh, their their history throughout the course of the game is that they sort of built their their kingdom and and this this world this, this city on a planet or sort of around the natural environment and they kind of built it into it. I wanted to try and do something similar with this piece. So starting out by just laying down some background mountains, real pointy, sharp, jagged rocks, and toss down sort of a, a grayish tone and then adding a little bit of highlight to it. I don't want to add. I don't want to make it too too bold or too distinctive since it's so far in the background and I want to keep it sort of misty and, and sort of distant and I added a little sort of central layer of mist which I kind of pushed around a little bit and probably a little bit too much but I'll know for the actual painting uh, exactly how much I'll need to do with that. It's probably just going to be a, a spray across with a, a little bit of a spray paint. <coughs> So I, I generally work both around my outline and uh, and not around my outline. I kind of play around with it a little bit. Uh, here I took the sky and uh, dropped it into a, a separate document and just flipped it over uh, in order to make the river. And that way I could get all the colors of, of the sky just reflecting down and uh, it'll be sort of perfectly balanced uh, with you know position and where it is in terms of the overall piece and took the little uh, sort of the burn tool and just toned down some of those uh, colors a little bit uh, to give sort of the uh, illusion of different uh, darknesses and, and depths within the water itself. And I just took a little bit of white and just tossing in little lines uh, basically just to kind of give myself a new outline. Uh, the, the original outline I don't like to 
follow too much, it's just sort of there as a guideline, I'll toss it over to say, okay, what am I, well, what am I working on next, but I, I don't just limit it to the, to the outline. So then I ended up taking a, uh, a brown color, uh, sort of similar to the sky, just sort of a, a uh, pulled the, 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 I guess you could say tone it down a little bit. <coughs> and here's just about using that as a base and then adding sort of these yellowy greens, uh, sort of as these grassy environments. And again, I'm not uh, adding too much detail since this is sort of a pre-painting uh, concept and I'm just kind of tossing in color. Uh, for the final little edges of the water, I just took an eraser, uh, the way I have my layers set up. Uh, is the green, I just went right underneath the uh, water and that way I can just erase around it pretty easily. And that way I was just going to go in and, and clean up the edges and give them little sharp points and little characters within the uh, thing. And I just erased a few rocks into the center. Uh, pretty simple. So in, in watching uh, these episodes from FCD Design School, there was a, a recent or, I don't know, semi-recent episode um, where he talks about uh, your visual library and, and, and talks about all kind of different things in, in creating an environment. And one of the things that's particularly stuck out to me was uh, being able to th think of all the stories and all the details uh, to the piece. You know, it's like, why, if you're creating a character, you know, what, what are the functions of the limbs and, and something, you know, maybe people have never seen, like, why why is this rock here, why is this tree here, and uh, I, I don't know if I ever really thought about it that way, I may be, you know, sort of done it subconsciously, but uh, now that I'm a little more conscious of it, uh, it's actually allowed me to sort of come across some uh, slightly more interesting uh, ideas. <coughs> so for the rocks, I just kind of want to toss in some big boulders and lobular structures. Again, you know, not too worried about detail or anything like that. So just a simple, you know, triple color thing, that mid-tone shadow and highlight. And uh, I took that same sky brush again in here, and uh, or at least a similar sky brush, and just sort of blended it out a little bit. Uh, and just a little bit of resizing to kind of play around with it. So for the city itself, uh, I wanted, I was modeling the, the structures out of sort of like old redwood trees. Uh, the idea was that uh, maybe these, so I was just thinking about all the different stories that could go along with this, all the different uh, it's, it's th things that no one will really notice, but it's there for me to kind of give myself a, a, a background so I know what I'm really working with. So I thought these trees in this town, maybe these people found these old like petrified wood trees and they, they carved their cities out of it and, and sort of built around it and they have these little little houses around it. So I, kind of left that as an open to interpretation and, and the trees sort of just uh, which are more like stone which are sort of melting with the rocks and everything all sort of comes together that way and that was just another you know reflection thing copying uh, pasting and flipping them over so that's pretty much all it really took to make this piece again I really wouldn't call this a completed piece it's more of a uh, general concept which I will use as a reference when I go into painting it later. Uh, there was just you know, throwing some throwing some shadows in and uh, I decided that the right side seemed a little empty so I decided to toss in uh, sort of an extra little tree to sort of a, give it a right right side framing. I think that added a, a final level of balance uh, to the piece uh, considering that uh, just looking at visual elements you know there's, there's three trees on the right I figured I'd balance out with a fourth and then the city adds sort of this odd number of, of uh, elements in the piece to kind of round it out and make it uh, much more uh, visually appealing. And that's pretty much it. So for tips, tutorials, and other art videos, uh, do stay tuned to the DMC Films and Citigalock Studios channel here on YouTube. This has been. See you guys next time.